back to my channel. I have again with me Sharon, the makeup artist. Hello. If you are not already subscribed to her, make sure you do because we do very similar tutorials. So if you like my tutorials, you're gonna like hers. So I'll put her channel up on the screen right here. So click on that, it'll open in a new window and then you can subscribe to her. Yay. But what we've done today, we've done a beauty Q&A. So we asked you guys on Snapchat, Twitter and Instagram to send us your beauty related questions and we got a lot. Mm -hmm. So we've just done one, well we've done two videos. This will be our second. The first one will be over on Sharon's channel. So check that out and you can see more of our answers to your questions. But if you want to see the makeups that we are wearing, my makeup, is on Sharon's channel. Her makeup is on my channel and I will put a card to it right here in this corner. Click on that again. You can watch it if you so desire. So let's just get straight into our questions, shall we? I'll let hey. you ask the question. The blur. Ask the blur. <laughs> I will answer the blurs as well as I can. Okay, great question. I feel like this is one that... <laughs> my face goes so red when I laugh. <laughs> First question, really simple one. I can answer this straight away. Um, House Without Elephants on Instagram has asked, best lashes that aren't totally drag? My favorites are the Ardell Demi Wispies, mm -hmm. and I usually cut about maybe two bunches off the outside corner so that they don't sit too close to the very inside corner of my eye, which I find very uncomfortable. So they sit a little bit further back, and I just think they're really, they, they really strike the balance between Glamour and volume, but still looking semi-realistic. Mm. What, you, you cut the, off the end, not the inner off corner? Off the end, yeah, because I feel like the end is often a little bit too long, mm. whereas the inside corner, I like that it tapers down to that, that kind of shorter length on the yeah. inside corner, so I like to keep that and then just cut off the longer ones. Yeah, my favorite ones at the moment, I think they're the 117 Texture Lashes from Ilua. Um, and they've got this special one at the moment. I can't remember where I got it from, and I can't figure out how to find it. It's not the usual pack, it's the usual pack with two extra things in it and it's actually got like, how would I explain this, it's got like half a lash, so it's not, it's got the full lash strip but then it's got like a tuft <laughs> and you just stick the tuft on the very end if you want to. So you can double it up but oh, it's only on the very end. Do you oh, know what I mean? clever, right. Yeah, so you get so like you double get, volume exactly. on the outside. But it, they're still really comfortable so it's not like too heavy on the inner corners where I think that's really horrible. Yeah. But you get the extra fluttery end lashes. Oh, I'm definitely going to have to take that out. Yeah, but I can't find them online anywhere. I will answer a question. Shall I have a look on Snapchat? Hey, Laws. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Go to eyeliner product. What? Love you guys. Oh, I love you too. Also, what would you be doing if you weren't doing YouTube? What would be your dream job other than YouTube? Okay, we'll answer that one because we heard that whole thing. Yeah. Sorry, we missed the first part of your question. I suck at Snapchat. That's my fault. Okay. Well, I'll answer. So what would I be doing if I wasn't doing YouTube? Um, I would still be doing makeup. So I would just be freelancing, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I would just be freelancing, maybe working on a makeup counter. Um, so I'd pr pretty much still be doing what I'm doing now, just minus the YouTube. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we so we both boring. came from the same background. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah I'd, I'd be doing that and I would probably be hating my life. Yeah, mine also. Yeah, because I would be so sad if YouTube didn't exist. Oh my god. I really hated working on makeup painters. Oh my god, don't get me started. Oh, it's just, it's a really tough job. Mm, it really is. tough. Yeah. And especially being on your feet all day. Oh my god. And retail in general. It's just hard and I feel so sorry. Can I, I just want to make a point. People that are going to be doing some Christmas shopping this year, please be kind to retail workers. It's not their fault if stuff is out of stock. Mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's not their fault if they're super busy and it takes them ages to serve you. Just please be kind and spread the love. Because our feet probably hurt. Yeah. <laughs> seriously. Like 10 hours on your feet. Yeah. On like marble floors. Yeah. And you probably haven't eaten in a while. Yeah. Oh. So sad. Okay, I'm gonna also go to Snapchat. So Irene, Irene Fien on Snapchat asked, Hi, Sharon, just a wee question. I feel like you might be Irish, Irene. <laughs> uh, just a wee question, or Scottish, with regards to contouring. Can you recommend a nice contouring cream or contouring makeup palette to go over foundation as opposed to powder? Thanks in advance. Wait, what was the question? Uh, a cream, contouring, makeup, or palette. Ooh, okay. I really wish I could answer this, Irene, but actually no because i haven't really tried that many cream contouring products that i really love um i know that who has just launched one anastasia has just launched one but have i haven't used that? it no have I, you no and i really want to i really want to try it as i want well. to try the fair kit because it really looks like it has a great kind of grayish mm. taupey kind of color so 
I can't really speak to it being an awesome product because I haven't used it, but of all of the ones I've seen, that's the one that I really want to tr try. Yeah, me too. I don't too. know if that helps. <laughs> yeah. Well, I actually do have a suggestion. I recently got the Burberry. It's a like a pen contour. Oh. Um, it's from uh -huh. Burberry, and I can't remember what it's called because I don't have it here with me, but it's really good, especially for nose contouring because um, you can literally draw down the sides of your nose and it blends out so easily. And the color is a good color. It's a l not too pigmented, it is a little bit sheer. Mm -hmm. And it's in the middle between gray and brown. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can do pretty much all your contouring with that if you want to, and it's nice and precise. I like sticks, actually. Yeah, yeah I really easy. like sticks. And then if that one is like a little bit too high for your price range, Tarte Cosmetics has one. Um, and that one is really good too, but I just don't like the color as much. It's a little bit more orange, and the color I have is Park of Princess. Right. So if you have like a warm skin tone, you'll probably get away with it. If not, go for the Burberry one. Okay, your turn. Oh yeah. I'm Belle from America, and I was wondering what makeup tricks you recommend for girls with glasses. I love y'all. Oh my god, I oh, love crap. your accent so much. Everyone asks me this question, and I have no tips because I only just got glasses like last week. And I love them. I feel so smart when I put them on. I'm like, wow, I look 10 times smarter. <laughs> I've just been wearing them around and they're only for like close up vision. Right. But I've just been wearing them around the house and I'm not doing anything just because I feel like I look so good. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I got glasses about maybe eight or nine months ago for on my computer. So a similar kind of thing. And I did create a video, shameless plug. <laughs> I did a video all about makeup for glasses where I got a lot of my subscribers and my followers to give me their tips. People mm. that have been wearing glasses for like their whole lives. And there's some awesome recommendations in that. So maybe Stephanie, you might link that in the description yes, box. Yes, I will. I'll put it in the description box. And can I put a card? Will that work? Oh yeah, that'll, that'll yeah. work, yeah. So I'll put a little card up here. It'll be there right now. So you, bleh, you can click on that <laughs> and then you can watch um, how to do your makeup. If yeah, you're I'm gonna like watch that because I'm gonna need to do that now. So yeah, thank you. Okay, your turn. Um, I'm gonna go back to Instagram. I think uh, this is from Sam Callahan Morris on Twitter, and she asked. Oh, I love her. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hi, Sam. She always comments on my stuff. I love you. <laughs> um, so she asked, "Why do I look white as a ghost in every selfie I take?" And mm. yeah, this is a great question. I think that a lot of people suffer with this. And it could be for a few different reasons, but number one might be that there's sunscreen in either your primer, your moisturizer, or your foundation. Sunscreen creates flashback. So if you're if you're taking a selfie and there's a flash involved, mm. the sunscreen bounces the light back. So your neck and body will absorb the light and then your face is bouncing it back. So your face is gonna look white. So just have a look at your, your base products and see if there is sunscreen. Usually anything over than a factor 15 is gonna create that bounce back. Um, also, the powder you're using could be causing it. If your powder has, has got like illuminating or brightening properties in it, it might have little kind of flecks of mica or, mm, or shimmering mica. and that, that will flash back as well. And that can also make you look a little bit shiny in photos. So it's probably just down to the products that you're using. What if she's not using flash and she looks white as a ghost? Maybe your foundation doesn't match your, oh, yeah. your neck. That's a very simple solution. Maybe that it's could be just it. not the right color match. <clears throat> Um, oh, and there's another one. I feel like I learned this from doing makeup in Ireland for a long time. Um, if you wear false tan and you don't false tan your face, but you false tan your body, sometimes, again, with flash photography, I feel like actually this would happen with non-flash photography as well. Um, the makeup is almost translucent. So in real life, it might look fine, but in a photograph, you can see your skin a little bit more. So it's showing mm. your bare, pale skin against your false tan body. So that could be something That's really interesting. You. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Do you have anything to add? No. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I covered that. <laughs> yeah. Sharon Hol oh. Holzel. Wittiness. That's, that's very incorrect how I said that. I think my apologies, Sharon. Sharon's another one, but like, you know how you recognize certain yes. followers? Yeah. Um, I recognize you and thank you so much for all your support. She says, oh, hi lovelies, could you talk bleh. Could you please talk about masks? Are they necessary? How often to do and what's best? Thanks. I'm gonna let you answer that first. Honestly, I don't, I'm not a big fan of masks. Me neither. I don't feel like they have ever done any, like I've never used a mask and thought, oh my God, my skin looks amazing after using it. If anything, usually my skin ends up breaking out whenever mm. I use a mask. Or it gets really irritated. Mm. That's what mine does. And then I feel like, you know, especially with like clay masks that are supposed oh, yeah. to like draw out impurities, like I used the Origins uh, charcoal clay mask and I swear to God, it was one of the worst breakouts of my life. It was like really? full on freaking acne across my cheeks and everything. And I talked about it, I shared my experience on the internet and people were like, oh, that's supposed to happen. It's drawing out the impurities. And I think that is total BS. 
if a product brings out that kind of a reaction in your skin it's it not really is, ideal is it it's not doing good things for your skin i'm yeah. sorry like that's an allergic reaction in like my eyes. you're not really if they mark like if they sell the truth and they market that mask as saying you will get a massive breakout if you use this because we're going to draw all the impurities out. You'd rather the impurities just stay in your skin, wouldn't I you? I kind of would. Like, yeah. You wouldn't buy it and be like, oh yeah, breakout's going to happen. Woohoo. Woohoo. Right yeah. in time for that special occasion that I've been using the mask for. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Actually, there is one that I've been liking and I got it recently. It's what, um, you know, the Shiseido thing. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Did you, you got oh, the I mask? I haven't tried that. Oh, I tried it. It's really nice. There's this mask. Um, oh, crap. What's it called? I can't remember. I'll like pop it up on the screen here. There's a Shiseido, is that how you say it? Yep. Yeah, Shiseido mask, and it is hydrating, really hydrating, and it's also meant to diminish any like sunspots or pigmentation, sun damage, etc. Oh, it's got that. tiny little balls in it, and you, <laughs> that sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you like rub it on your face. You rub the balls on your face. And they burst. <laughs> oh my god. And um, it's really nice. <laughs> I have, a, I have a question here that just came in and I feel like you're going to be excellent for answering this. This Ooh. is on my Instagram. Um, it's Belle and Rocky asks, love you two ladies. Thank you, love you two. Um, how do you hide big pores and the best primer for dry dehydrated skin? I know you've done quite a few tutorials about mm. kind of hiding pores. So I'm going to let you take that one. So I have also done a video on this. So I will put a card to it in the top corner there. You can click on that and watch it. But basically my... Main tip would be, like, I'm not really a fan of primers, to be honest. I don't use them personally, um, unless I'm just trying out a new one on the hunt for finding one that works for me. So I'm not really going to recommend a primer, because that's not really my style of makeup. Mm. But what I do like to do for minimizing the look of pores is to get a tiny little, um, this one here is really good actually, a tiny little blending brush like this, get your foundation and actually work it into the pores. I know it sounds disgusting, but if your makeup is sitting on top of the pore, and not actually filling the pore, you're gonna see the hole. Especially if you do have enlarged pores, like mm. I have really big pores, you can actually see the dent in your skin. Whereas if you make sure everything is the same color and you work the foundation into your pore, it's just gonna look more mm. seamless and the pores aren't gonna stand out as much. And then I also like to make sure everything's a nice, um, even matte because the light bouncing off it will actually like show the pores mm -hmm. a lot more. If everything's matte, you're not going to see them as much. Yeah, that's very true. I know, and I know that some people might say that that sounds gross, but it's exactly the same as using a primer because that's what primer does. It mm. fills in your pores, so you're just removing the step of a primer. Mm. Um, but you like primers. I do. I do like primers. Suggest? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I really do like primers, and my favorite for pore filling is actually Benefits Professional. Really? I really like that. Yeah, it's that. There's a few other brands that do kind of similar versions, like L'Oreal have one that's in a little pot, but I can't quite remember what it's called. Maybe I'll let you know and you can put it in the description or something. Mm -hmm. um, but it's there anything that's like a, a moussey kind of really silicone-y, velvety kind of texture, it literally does that. It, it's just like filler <laughs> for your pores and you just like push it in and it gives a really nice smooth effect. Um, yeah, I like that one. Interesting. And then for a primer for dry or dehydrated oh, yeah. skin, I really love Laura Mercier primers and they do a gorgeous one for dehydrated skin that is really nice and I can't use it myself because I've got really oily skin, but on clients that have drier skin, it's fabulous. It's, it's really nice and kind of creamy, but not so creamy that it's gonna make your foundation like slide off. And it's got kind of an illuminating property in it, so it gives a gorgeous sheen to the skin. So your skin just looks really healthy and luminous, which I know can be lacking in dry or dehydrated mm. skin. So yeah, check out Laura Mercier. So that is all the questions that we have time to answer for the moment. Sorry if we didn't get around to answering your questions. Um, maybe we'll have to do another collaboration soon and yeah. just answer more questions because a lot of questions do come through. Makeup yeah. is a very tricky subject. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to pop over to Sharon's channel, I will link it right here for you. You can watch our part two of our beauty Q&A because mm -hmm. we've done it in two different videos, as I said in the intro. So watch this one and then head over there and watch that one and you might have your question answered, who yes, knows? Yeah. Anyway, I will put all our social media, the both of us and both of our, well, Sharon's channel, in the description box down below, so make sure you come follow us on all those sites and we can take our conversation from here over there. Thanks for watching, guys. Love you. Bye! Bye.